Do you have too much body fat? It tends to... <laughs> okay. Do you have too much body fat? <laughs> Sometimes don't we all feel that, right? Well, I'm going to read some letters because you have been recently sending me so many good questions. And so I want to go ahead and answer some of them. And in that, I want you to know that I will read, if you want to send me a question and it's a really good one, you know, something that I think would benefit all of us, go ahead and send it and I'll read your name on here, okay? Let me find these. Okay, here's the very first one. I want to address this because two of you actually asked this question. Let me have a drink of coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm in a hotel, as you can tell. This is from Mark Weiss, 3483. Hi, Mark. You asked me, I wonder about power sources. You are looking for places to park where you can get good solar. Why not just get the most powerful Jackery, maybe get two? And if you drive so much, you could be charging them up from the car. Well, I had actually somebody else ask me this question because what I've done is I've mentioned when I go into a city and I know where they are in Tucson, where there are some solar panels. Well, I really meant solar panels to park under. I really meant that what happens is a lot of cities that have a lot of sun, like Tucson, some of Flagstaff in Arizona, um, they have uh, covered parking. And what they are is the solar panels. That way, if it's in a park or in a facility, a building, they can use the power from the, from the solar panels and power up you know, the building without having to use electricity. But we who park or their customers and, or people who are visiting a park and they have that, wow, they get shade. So I'm always looking for shade. And a lot of times I can get shade from the solar panel covered parking. Now, as far as having uh, jackeries and solar panels, oh, I got them. In fact, you mentioned get two. Well, I have two jackeries and I've showed them on my um, channel many times. I have two Jackery, two 500s, and, and then I have solar on the top of my roof. So that was, that was a good question. That can be confusing if you're not a nomad or maybe you're back east where there's not a lot of solar being used for covered parking. That would be confusing. I had another gal ask me and she says, well, explain the solar. How do you hook into the solar when you find it? Is it available? You know, so it's covered parking. That's what I'm referring to. But thank you for the question very much. You know, sometimes when I mention these things, I assume that everybody knows what I'm talking about. Okay, here is a really nice um, meme I found. It says, one simple rule in life. If you wouldn't like it done to you, don't do it to others. Okay. Okay, here is a question. Hello, I have a question. <laughs> Hi, you are Lewis Bale one. What do you do for an address for mail, DMV, etc.? Because you have to verify everything now. Well, exactly. Well, I've done actual videos on this and I go into it extensively on my book how to live in a minivan, the minivan leeway. It's on Amazon. If you want to go to minivanlee.com, I've got the link there and I've also got net gaiters and I've got jewelry and I've got an exercise video. I've got headgear, things like that on minivanlee.com. Very safe to order from and I've been sending out orders right and left lately. Thank you, everybody. Well, the book, and it does explain it very in detail, all about having, it's called a domicile. Having a domicile, that means that, that those where it's an address 
where you live by the rule, you live by those laws. If you are in Arizona, your domicile is in Arizona, that means that you have an address that, that you can receive mail to. It is, a, it is considered a residence and your domicile is in Arizona. Those are the rules, the laws that you follow, whether it be getting your license, getting your red car registration, your voting laws, how you get to vote, um, and you know insurance. You know insurance is different for all different kind, all different states. Insurance really is car insurance a little bit higher in Arizona than it is in in Ohio, which is my domicile is in Ohio. Um, just all the laws, you know, like um, your wills and just all that stuff. Your law, the laws that you abide by, is in your domicile. That's the, that's the choice where you, that's how you choose to live, where you choose to live. Well, a lot of us travelers, for sure, we have to have a domicile. We just have to. A lot of nomads use family or friends. They're trustworthy friends and family. You don't want to just say, hey, would you take care of my mail for me? Can I use your address? And that person isn't um, really uh, organized or very thorough. They could be throwing things away that are very important. They're just like, oh, that doesn't look important and throw it away. You have to trust these people with, with your mail. Well, if you don't have family or friends that can do it, there are mail forwarding companies. And I do have, I can leave a link for getting your domicile set for Arizona. And I've got some people, I've got some friends that I know that have done this and I've got instructions on it. A lot of people use uh, South Dakota and um, the Southern tip of South Dakota. When you first go in, they've got everything set up to help you. What they, what South Dakota appreciates is they're not an overly populated state. And so they want more representation. Um, in Congress and then the Senate, yeah, in Washington, D.C. So what they, they've done is rolled out the carpet and made it as easy as possible to get your residence there. They'll help you with your, your license, your mail, everything. The only problem is, is when you do need to go renew like your license or register a new car, you do have to drive to South Dakota. Well, if your birthday is in the, in the dead of winter, it might not work out because you're going to have to go up there around your birthday, right? <laughs> so, and there has been pushback from South Dakota locals because what they're saying is people are voting for in South Dakota, but they have, they have no, um, they have no dog in the fight. They don't know. They're just voting and they're not really looking at the issues because they're not really spending time there. But South Dakota then did vote and said, no, we, we want these, we want these residents. We want them. We want more representation in Washington, DC. So that didn't go through, but there have been people that push back on that. It's like, whoa, these people don't even know what they're voting for. And they, and they've got a voice in, in, an, in our politics would, they're not even here to enjoy it or not enjoy it. So they might not be voting properly, right? So very good question. I'll leave the link for the, I think twice I've talked about this, but really you might want to get the book. And you can also go online and look it up. Damaso. Damaso. Look to the Damaso. Yes. Okay, next. Um, this is from Robin Shore. 7942. Ooh. I finally have my van now, but won't give up my little flat, I like that, a little flat, until I feel comfortable in my minivan. That makes my family happier. Yeah, they're, they, you can have both. I think mean, that's, that's a good system. Unless I get evicted when I can't afford the rent anymore. I still have a few more months before I finish working full time. A lot of people are doing this. Is this what I've been telling you all along? You have a house, but you know, things are a little unstable. Get yourself, get your minivan or get a van or get your 
SUV, whatever you're driving and get it ready in case you need to go. So get it ready, but keep your residence if you can afford it. Some people just, they've realized I can't afford this anymore. I just can't afford it. Um, I'm tired of paying property tax. Maintenance is killing me. I'm getting older and I can't do it myself. And it's prices are going up, up, up. Um, my neighbors are like um, neighbors from hell. Um, <laughs> yeah, I see it. Uh, yeah, I, I've been there too. So, but if that's not the case, you can keep both. Just keep going and then practice in your van, your car, your vehicle, your rig, and practice it. Go for like a weekend and go camping. Yeah. Okay. This is from Feminine Poet. Okay. It says, thank you, Lee. This is a special time for you. Question. One of the biggest challenges seems parking. It's something one has to do every day. Exactly. Well, it's not too much of a challenge for me because here's how Minivan Lee rolls. Uh-huh. I don't do that much traveling anymore. I'm only traveling around a certain, sort of a certain state or two. And I know the cities where I'm going. I am done doing all the driving everywhere. I'm done with that. So when I go to a city that I know, I know where I'm going. I know where those solar panel cover parking are for the day. I know where I can park at night because I've done it. And if you want to, whoops. and if you want to, I mean, if you're going to Quartzsite for the winter, you know where to park. <laughs> it's on BLM land. And I've listed... Um, all of the BLM that is near Quartzsite, they all have names and all you gotta do is punch them in and Google will take you there. Yeah. So good question. Now, I've done videos about parking. I can always do another one. In fact, one of them, Paul and I actually, we drive around and we talk about places as we're driving around the city to say, this might be good. Look for this and look for that. You can always park in a residence. I mean, a resident that's sort of like not too high, not too low, just right in the middle. Not too high end, not too, you know, that looks like you might get robbed in the night. Um, and go in if you're, if there's a Walmart, go in and ask them. Say, hey, is it okay if I spend the night here? Just ask them. And they'll say yes or no. If there's a Cracker Barrel, you can do a Cracker Barrel. If you're traveling on the road, you can do rest stops. Yeah, so that gives you a little bit, but don't be so, um, don't be so scared about parking. It's not as horrible as it seems. Because even if you get the knock on your window, you know, you're not gonna die from it. It is startling to get woke up by it, but it, it won't, you won't die. Don't roll your window down all the way, or maybe you could die from it, you know, cause it could be somebody trying to rob you. Okay, next. This is from Frog Moon Mama. Okay. Love your daily videos. Yeah, I mean, a lot of you say that you do. That now, I let me explain today. I'm in a, a hotel and I just need to, I'm going to be leaving here soon and I wanted to get some things done. And I just wanted to sleep and I get a bath, wash my hair, soak in the tub, but I'm going to be leaving here pretty soon. So I wanted to give you in a kind of a, a, a quick, easy to do, unedited, I don't think I'm going to edit this at all. Why should I? an unedited video for you so it doesn't take so much time. And, uh, but I do like to get them out every day because some of you, you not only worry about me, especially since I'm solo again, you worry about me, but don't worry. And um, they, you say that you just, it's like talking to a friend. You are my friend. And I feel like, I feel like I'm talking to a friend also. I mean, I'm feeling the same thing. 
and I do find it very enjoyable, especially the fact that I'm not really like um, traveling with anybody and I'm not really talking to anybody on a regular basis. I'm kind of sticking to myself and I'm cordial when I go into stores and say, hey, try to say something, um, compliment or something. And that's about as much socialization as I need at the moment, but I will be seeing um, my family as soon as I get to where I'm going, my next, my next journey, right? Okay, so Frog Moon Mama, love your daily videos. Thank you. And I like doing them. Watch them with my coffee first thing when I get up. I love how you find joy in the simple things. Well, duh, we have to. You know, it's really attitude, isn't it? I'm curious. Ooh, she's curious. What are you curious about there, Frog Moon Mama? Well, are you still doing a $700 month budget? I wonder because when I get my SS down the line, it's not going to be very big. So I'm learning a lot from you to prepare. Do you mind if I, so I don't have to edit this? Let me. <laughs> there we go. We'll make it as neat as possible. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so I personally know I am not doing a $700 budget because there's a lot of things that I need not only for for videos but I'm not being as careful anymore but it's still so possible in fact you know next month I might actually do it I'm going to be in Tucson I'm going to be by myself and uh there's <laughs> here's the thing Here's my thing, and I probably can, maybe I will do it, and and we'll, we'll see. But here's my thing when it comes to Tucson. There, I've mentioned this, Planet Fitness in Tucson, all of them. Well, okay, there's one that's not an older one. They have wonderful showers. And by that, I mean that the, the environment to get my shower is really nice big um, glass door, frosted glass. There's a changing area. And then I walk, just step into the shower, but it's got a wall. So while I'm taking a shower, I'm not getting water on my clothes. There's a mirror there. There's a little shelf I can put things on. Yeah, really, really, really nice. So I can get my showers there and, and do very well with it. In here, in Flagstaff, in Planet Fitness, there's only one. The shower's <clears throat> bad. Um, flimsy. Um, they tend to have, there There were some guys, there were a lot of guys coming into the women's shower area. And so I kind of stopped taking a shower. It's not so much, ooh, you know, I'm sure they've seen everything. It just was a little unnerving, right? And a lot of nomads stopped taking showers at, that, at Planet Fitness and Flagstaff. They were just, in and out guys, in, in, I mean, they look like men, you know? And then there was another place where I was getting a shower, but they were so dirty. I mean, there was scum in the corners and stuff. So that's one of the reasons why I'm in Flagstaff. I tend to um, spend time more doing the hotel thing, which it can get run expensive. Okay, so the $700, yeah. Now, as far as SS, exactly. I, I'm not, a sh I'm not, I, I don't, you know, oh, that's so private. On that, I'm not overly private. I, I make shy of $1,000 a month on my social security. I do. And, um, but I do have a good savings. I've always had a good savings. I am very frugal. I've got money in the bank. I don't know how secure it is at this point, but I do have some money in the bank for an emergency. You need an emergency fund. And that's something I do want to talk about um, down the road, getting your emergency fund. But, you know, just keep your um, spending down. To answer your question, no, I'm not right now doing that. But I will. So, thank you. Here's another one. This is from Just Not Today. Oh, <laughs> I like that. 287. Hi, Lee. Can you talk about healthcare for nomads? Yes, I can. Do nomads continue regular healthcare checks? How often? Does it increase because of the stress or 
travel of the lifestyle, thank you in advance. Um, first of all, um, if I, th I would think that being a nomad creates less stress in most areas. Now, when you, once you get going, you're going to be out of your comfort zone. So that is stressful, but you'll get in the zone, you'll get in the zone and you'll just be doing your thing. If you travel a lot, yeah, that can be stressful. It can be stressful on your back, driving all the time. Yeah, and then all, every every night having to find a new place to park. I am less stressed on the way that I approach the nomad life now. I don't do a lot of traveling. So um, as far as healthcare, I don't know what a lot of them do. I do know that if you're 65 and older, you do have Medicare and you can use that anywhere you go. And a lot of people do get the the um, the uh, and the, the advantage uh, Medicare Advantage, whether it be it's not through Medicare, although sorta, and um, it's you can get like silver sneakers. It's an advantage program, and you don't always have to have premiums every month either. Excuse me, but do nomads continue regular health care checks? I would imagine so. Um, I don't. I'm very healthy, and um, I think since COVID, I really don't want to go. Um, I'm just kind of um, a little distrusting. Anyways, we won't go into that, but um, I just, I watch what I do, and I, I'm aware of my body, right? But I would imagine a lot of people say, oh yeah, I'm going back to blah, 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 and I'm going to be getting all my checkups. Now, a lot of um, seniors, some of them are vets. So they have registered with the veteran system and they get their checkups there. And then if they need medications or whatever, and they can also go down to um, uh, Aldeganes, uh, what is it called? Um, right below Yuma across the border of Mexico. Um, I, I, I'm having a brain fart, I'm so sorry. I know the name, but it's not coming to me. Okay, one more here, I think. What do we got the time? We got time. This is from Joe Dabney. Joe, D oh, Joe Dabney, 4358. Hey, Lee, are you going to try and travel with another person or couple? I worry about you being solo. Oh, no, no, don't, don't worry about me. Um, I've been solo for years. And before that, I even was single for 25 years. So don't worry about me. Um, I think we should all just, you know, I mean, it can be a concern that with the, these days, but you know, I was actually thinking, here's what I've been thinking. Um, I might actually go to court site for maybe a month. And also I was kind of thinking it would be kind of fun just for, I don't know, to try it for the four, for a 14 day thing. I'm doing one of the caravans, Bob Wells caravans. I, I get to meet new people. That would be kind of fun. I might actually do that. And because I've known people that do um, the uh, the caravans and um, I've actually, we've been to Silly Al's. We went with a whole bunch of um, the people who were in um, the caravans. Uh, Rhonda invited, right, invited us. And so Glenna and I and Paul, two years ago, we went. And so we got to meet all of them really nice people. I think it'd be kind of interesting to see what the caravan is all about. And then I could let y'all know like what my experience was. I always thought with the caravans like, oh no, a caravan. I mean, I know where I'm going. Why would I want to follow a caravan? And why would I want to have to, but I think it'd be kind of fun. I am I think I might be up for something like that. Yeah. Let's see, what do we got here? I've got a couple more, but I'm going to save them for tomorrow. And coming up, I'm going to be kind of busy. Well, not overly busy, but um, just to make it easy on me because I am getting things ready to travel. So I think this is, I think these letters are wonderful. And I'm going to encourage you, if you have a question you want me to read on here, please send it to me in comments and I will address it. Okay? Okay? I love you guys so much. Mwah. And uh, good things are coming our way, aren't they? Yeah, good things are really coming our way. 
Thanks for watching it all the way through. Please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And then, you know, like I said, we got the book. Uh, order the book if you're going to get ready. And even if you don't think you're going to do it right away, might as well get things started, huh? Huh? <laughs> I love you guys. Neck gators. Yeah. See, th like this stops here, but this makes it look like that. And what you can do is put it up if you want to. I know sometimes at Planet Fitness, somebody's going crazy with all that antibiotic spray, germ killer stuff. It's floating in the air. I don't want it in my lungs. So when I'm working out, I always have my neck gator and I see somebody doing that, I put it up and continue working. I want the little particles. This won't stop everything, but it'll stop some of the particles. And you may need it for quartzite, right? Because you got that, the wind, the dust wind. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I love you. Mwah, mwah. Bye.